Today is a very special day. I get to interview the CEO of a very profitable eight figure business and he's going to show us how to make extra money. And he's also going to give some great money advice as well. And this isn't your average everyday money advice that you just hear on YouTube or in a book. This is million dollar money advice that you've probably never even heard of before. So I hope you're ready because this video can change your life. Hey, what's up? My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can better yourself every single day and live life on your own terms. On this channel, you will learn how to increase your income, how to save your money, and how to get out of debt. Let's get into this interview. Steven, thank you so much for joining us today. It's not every day that you get a CEO on your channel to talk about money, to talk about how to help people increase their income. So Steven, thank you so much. I'm delighted to be here. Absolutely. Let's go. All right, everybody. This is Steven Summers. He is the co-founder and CEO of Marketplace Superheroes. These guys are absolutely killing it. They're teaching thousands of people around the world to build upon their streams of income. They can even make a living off of what this business is helping them doing. So Steven, if you would just tell us a little bit about yourself, about your business, what you're doing for all of these thousands of people around the world and how they can do the same. Sure. Absolutely, Reggie. No problem. And thanks so much for having me, first of all. Uh, yeah, so our business is Marketplace Superheroes. And as you mentioned, we do teach people all over the world how to sell their own branded products on Amazon uh, globally, not just say on Amazon.com. Although we have a lot of people, 65% uh, of our audience are from the US, uh, but people sell all over the world on Amazon, different websites. Uh, we've actually sold about $12 million of products on Amazon and our community well over $100 million at this point in time. I don't have the exact figure because it's kind of hard to do when you've like 8,000 students, but well over 100 million from the people that we've tracked. So that's really, really cool. And uh, yeah, we've been doing this for, um, I'm doing Marketplace Superheroes now for five years, nearly six years, but I've been selling online on Amazon for 10 years now. That is awesome. So can you kind of walk us through the journey of what it looked like from going from from nothing all the way to building an eight figure business, what the process looked like, what some stumbling blocks or maybe what some mental blocks might have been if you've had doubts, just kind of so my audience can understand like what you were going through mentally. And, and if if you ever thought at one point that maybe this wouldn't work out, did you ever see yourself where you're at today? Yeah, sure. Look, I've had a lot of those moments in my career. So just to give everybody a little bit of context, I'm 33 years old uh, at the time of recording. And so when I was in my sort of like late teens, early 20s, uh, like a lot of people, I was in college for a bit. I didn't finish college. I was studying business and really I wanted to play music. That's all I wanted to do. And I was trying to, to make it in the music industry. I actually left my hometown, moved to the capital here in Ireland, uh, in Dublin. I actually back read my hometown again now, funny enough, I've come full circle. Uh, but I was living in Dublin and I started working as a job as a data processor, which is really boring. I don't know if anybody's ever done that listening, but basically you just type information from a form into a computer all day long, every single day. And I definitely wasn't at the time like an entrepreneur or anything. Although a lot of my teens, I would have done a lot of entrepreneurial things like doing concerts and making some money there, but never enough to like, you know, pay my way full time. Cause that's obviously a, a fairly big jump for a lot of us to do. And so, you know, I'm in my kind of early twenties and uh, the band finishes and I felt really lost. I was like, what the hell am I going to do now? You know, this was my destiny didn't work out. And I started doing some really unhealthy things. I started drinking a lot and things like that because I just felt really depressed for, <laughs> for quite a long time. Luckily for me, like I was again, about 21 at this point and started reading personal development books. So my favorite book, the one that changed my whole life actually was a Jack Hanfield book called How to Get From Where You Are to Where You Want to Be, which was the first 25 chapters of a bigger book he owns, he's written called The Success Principles, which I really recommend. It's a, it's a brilliant book. It covers a lot of success principles in everything, money, you know, the whole lot, career, everything else. So I was reading that book and I started getting healthier. I started working out, looking after myself and stay, still, still in my job. But I just started, I started Googling online, you know, how to make money online, how to become an entrepreneur. And for anybody who's ever Googled how to make money online, you know what you find when you Google that. It's, it's not good. It's a lot of scammy stuff. And I just mean like, I wasn't going to be one of these people that's like, here's how to make money online by teaching other people how to make money online, by teaching other people how to make money online. That wasn't for me. 
And a lot of people listening, I'm sure you've seen that before too. So I was searching for like two years, trying to figure out what business to be in. And then it just hit me one day. I was like, I'm not an expert in anything. I'm a data, I'm data processor. Like, what can I do that, that would just make sense where I don't have to be an expert? And so selling physical products online was just the thing I, I settled on. So quick, long story short, I started looking for someone to help me. I knew that I wouldn't be successful on my own. And my aunt heard I was looking for someone who's done this kind of thing. And she introduced me to, to Robert. He's still my business partner to this day, Robert Ricky. And so I met this guy, big tall guy from Northern Ireland, you know, big beard. And I was like, you know, to, he started talking to me about business and I was clueless. And he basically said, come up and work in the warehouse for a little bit, see what you think, and we'll go from there. So I did, worked in the warehouse and loved it. And that's how I got my start. I started selling products that were lying around his warehouse secondhand. I started selling them on eBay. I started selling them on Amazon, started making some money. And so look, there's a lot's happened since then, which of course we're going to talk about, but that's how I got my start. Uh, in terms of like the changes along the way, there have been tons, which I'm happy to tell, tell you about any of them. The biggest change I would say, Reggie, is that you've got to go from a consumer to a producer. And I was consuming the whole time before I got, before I met Robert. And he was the first person that taught me, you got to start ugly and keep going and learn a specific skill and keep, and keep doing it. Wow. Wow. That, that's, that's actually crazy because I, I think about what you just said about how you went to school, you didn't finish, but you were studying business. You wanted to, you wanted to be in the music industry and everything. Yeah. And you ended up becoming a data, a data processor. So a lot of people, as they grow and, and they get into a certain field of a job and then they work for, let's say, five, 10 years, they don't like it. That's what that was the boat sure, that I was in. You know, I could not stand my first job, right? And I was there for only two years, but it felt like an eternity, right? Yeah. And you know, that was when I got to the point where I was like, well, I want to build a business so I can sustain myself outside of work. So I'm not just worried about one stream of income. If I lose that, that's it, you know? So, for the people who don't have business degrees, the people who didn't finish school, or even if they did finish school, if they don't know the first thing about business, what yeah. would be your advice to them to get them out of their own heads? Perfect. Well, I love this question because this was my problem too. You know, like I, I, I remember one time I wanted to make, I was like, let me test this person development stuff. And I was like, I want to make 10 grand extra. That was my goal. And then, but at the time, actually, I didn't want to make 10 grand extra. What I actually said was, I want 10 grand in my bank account, right? Because I, mm -hmm. I, hard, I hardly had anything in my bank account. Mm -hmm. And so I started like going, oh, what if I like cut, cut my way to wealth, right? I started like cutting out all my monthly stuff and everything. Then I can get to 10 grand. But of course, I realized that's a terrible strategy. And so increasing the income, it's such a simple thing. But that was like my big, amazing brainwave. I have to increase my income. So a lot of people get stuck on that. And what I would tell everybody is this. The single easiest and simplest thing to do is you've got to go and find what I call a pre-proven process or process. And now you say that. So it's already proven. Like someone's already done it before and it's a known thing. So like Amazon FBA is an example. I'm not saying you have to go and do that. I'm just saying it's been figured out. Someone's already gone and done it. They've talked about it and you can just go do it. And you can apply that to anything. Learn how to write emails for companies and then go on out and become an email copywriter. Another example, right? Just it's something that's already done. And someone's figured it out and has talked about it. And when you do that, what's going to happen is you're going to get experience in business, offering a service or selling a, a certain type of product. And that's going to stand to you much more than anything else. And the quickest way to make more money faster with something like this, it's to learn a high income skill. And I didn't have any of those many years ago. I would say simple examples of that is what I just mentioned, like writing emails. It's incredibly valuable to a lot of companies as uh, mm -hmm. something that's really become big over the last number of years is like, you know, learn how to build sales funnels, right? So a sales funnel is basically a collection of pages where it helps guide someone from non-customer to customer at a very basic level. And there's loads of good stuff out there about that. It's a skill that I've learned over the last number of years been very valuable to me, but you have to learn something that you can bring to a business and you can help that business make more money. That's at a very simple level. And so and, and, and it has to be already proven. It's already, it's already been figured out. And I think that's the big thing, Reggie. People, they want to have this unique idea because that's what the media sells us, right? You go on Shark Tank, you get a whole bunch of money, you, you, you start the business, you sell it for $200 million and Reggie and Steven run off into the sunset with loads of money, right? That's like the, <laughs> the belief, right? 
but the yeah. reality is very different. And also like the thing to understand is you can, you can sell like pretty much anything on the internet now, and you can do pretty much anything on the internet right now. And mm -hmm. there's an audience for it. So I would say that's the big thing I would tell everybody. And then you can start to innovate and things like that as you progress. But, but that's the first step what I just said there. Absolutely. So, so you talked about how, you know, increasing your income is the fastest way. That's how you get the 10 grand in your bank account. So there's a lot of us who, you know, who feel like we're just one, one pay cut, one, one paycheck short yeah. from being broke, from losing their house, from losing their car, everything right. they own, you know, and you want that cushion of 10 grand. And that's, that's a great place to start. And you can penny pinch your way to that, but how, how long is that going to take you? You know, so I, I want you to, could you just walk us through, you know, your journey of saving money and how the, there was such a drastic difference between you saving money and you actually just yeah. increasing your income? Sure. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm, my parents are great people. They're not entrepreneurial. And they taught me about saving money early on. Like I was big into saving. I thought saving is the way you get wealthy. And in, in America, Canada, over here in Ireland, it doesn't matter where you live. The main advice out there in the world is like, save your money, uh, you know, get a 401k, a Roth IRA in the US. Over here, we call it something a little bit different, but that doesn't matter. And, and then, you know, keep going for long enough, keep putting some money into those things for long mm -hmm. enough. And then eventually you'll have money. But the problem with all that is if you look at banks right now, the world over, America, wherever, it doesn't matter what country you're in, deposit interest rates. So the interest rate you get in your savings is zero. In some cases, it's minus. You have to pay the bank to save your money, right? Absolutely. So you don't get any interest on that money. Therefore, if you have all these savings, and I'm not saying don't save, you should have an amount of money that gives you that security, like you just talked about. And that's a good thing to work towards for sure. But the trouble is, if, if saving is your pathway to wealth, you're never going to have money. And I didn't, and I had to learn that in my life because if you're getting 0% interest on money, it can't grow because you know, everyone talks about compound interest, right? It's the, mm -hmm. it's the whatever wonder of the world and all that, right? Which is true, but you have to compound with, you have to compound number one, which isn't in a savings account, but number two, you have to have more money continually going into that compounding account. So it will actually grow into something big. So that's why like a lot of people are wasting time, I would say worrying about say, learning more ways to save money, where they'd be much better utilizing that time to figure out a skill that they can go and learn and businesses they can go and offer that to so that they can actually increase their income in the short term. Just on that point as well, Reggie, I didn't know any of this stuff. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. there's other things you learn as you become more um, knowledgeable with money. For example, like you can't in most countries, the US as well, there's a thing called a deposit uh it's, a, it's called a deposit uh, guarantee scheme in most countries, right? Mm -hmm. And basically what that means is like you can hold a certain amount of money in a bank and after that amount of money, the bank doesn't guarantee it anymore. So if something happened to the bank, you would not get that money. And that is usually about 100,000 in most countries, which I know a lot of people listening, you're probably like me, you don't have near 100,000, so it's not a problem. But the point is like, you'll get to that place sometime in the future. And it's important to understand that people out there are not telling you how money actually works. Because the other side of that is a lot of people talk about, you know, uh, pension funds and da, 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 da. And pension funds are great and they're important for your future. But if you uh, are not dealing with the problem right now, which is you're just not making enough money, mm -hmm. forget about pension funds. Because, you know, it'll take you until you're 200 years old for you to have exactly. any decent amount of money. Right. It's why when I go to America, I see and it's not nice, but you see a lot of very elderly people working in mm -hmm. Walmart and places like that until they're very old because they they follow this path and it doesn't it doesn't end well, you know. Yeah. Matter of fact, I'm glad that you that you ended on that point of working very old. So we, let's let's. Fat, let's rewind to when they start like 18, 20 years old, right? And they're starting their full-time job. Okay, no matter what position you're in, no matter how many products you're making, or if you work in a grocery store or in a manufacturing plant, yeah. there's only a certain amount of people that you can add value to if you're working a job and only working a job. Let's say there's 5,000 people in your entire facility that work under you for some reason. Let's say you're the top leadership of that plant or that grocery yeah. store or whatever. Okay. The max people you can add value to is 5,000 people. Mm -hmm. Sure, the people outside there, but it's very indirect. The only people that you can directly impact is those 5,000 people. 
when you do something like Amazon FBA or YouTube or any type of other bigger business that you do on your own accord with a team, you can then multiply that exponentially. Am I wrong? You're right, man. You're right. And that that's a big, what you just said is really important. I'd like to pick up on if you don't mind. Yeah, absolutely. It's, right. Yeah. It's like, I heard the same things for years. You have to add value. Like you just said, right. And you're, you're correct. And like you just said as well, if you're working, let's say in Walmart, right. And you can impact 5,000 people. Problem is no one's going to pay you for the impact you're making because you're, you're in a set job. You're going to get a set amount of money. Maybe you get a tip or something like that. And then again, but you just cannot get wealthy that way. And, and Jim Rohn, one of my favorite motivational speakers of all time, he said, uh, he talked about this and he said, you know, you've got to become more valuable to the marketplace. And so that's a big concept for people to consider. If you haven't already considered it, ask yourself like, so if I go, think about how most people get a job, right? They have a CV, we call it CV here in Ireland. You got a resume, right? In the States. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I go to uh, an employer with my resume and I say, is there a position here for me? Can you find one? There's my resume. Like, can you figure something out for me? Yeah. And it's such a weak position to be in, right? But that's what we've been all taught to do. Whereas actually, imagine you had the ability to go and look at a business, for example, right? Or even a local business. And you were able to see, wow, these guys aren't on social media. Wow, these guys, they've got products. They're not listing them on Amazon. What mm -hmm. if I listed those products on Amazon? What if I start like help them with their social media? Help them get more customers. Help them get see, help them get something. I'm going to therefore increase my value to the marketplace and people are going to want to pay me because here's another quote for you. It's from Zig Ziglar. And I just realized I'm quoting all these motivational white dudes. Les Brown is also <laughs> great and all these other guys. <laughs> but anyway, they're, anyway, I'm just laughing about that. But, uh, but here's the thing. Uh, what, one of the things Zig Ziglar said was you can have anything you want in life as long as you help enough other people get what they want. And mm -hmm. I think that is such a good idea. What do you think, Reggie? I think that's perfect. I think that's a great idea. And, and just expanding up upon that, you know, if if you're like like you just said, if you're working a job, you're you're limited. Your yeah. your salary is capped. No matter if you're at the top or at the bottom, you're, you're capped at how much you can make. Exactly. Bonuses include whatever, but you can continuously scale it if you go the entrepreneurial way. And people tend to say, "Hey, well, I don't agree with that. That's risky. Uh, that's a scammy thing. What would, what would what would you have to say about that? If someone yeah. is trying to constantly, you know, making someone doubt themselves around, you know, going their own route and building their own stuff on their own accord, what yep. would be your advice to them? Oh man, absolutely. Welcome to the world of entrepreneurship. You know, I mean, uh, it's so nor that's normal. Like, I mean, I remember whenever I was in my job, like it's, it's over ten years ago now. And I told everybody I was leaving. I was going to go and, you know, work in a warehouse and try and learn how to sell on Amazon. People said to me, we'll see you back here in six months. That was what a lot of people said, mm -hmm. right? And a couple of things on that. Number one, they, like, imagine you want to start a business and mm -hmm. you're listening to people who've never had their own business, who've never really made very much money, who don't like their, their job they're in. They're not very happy. And you're taking their advice on your business idea. Mm. Bad idea. Mm. You, there's a, and it's a sort of a simple little rule. I heard someone say one time, I think it's really good. It's like, it's called the pile of money rule. So if your pile of money is way bigger than my pile of money, I'm going to listen to you about that because you know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. But if your pile of money is like the same size as me or smaller than me, I'm not going to listen to you. Now, I know yeah. it's an overly simplified rule, but you get the idea, right? And so I think that's the number one thing. People will doubt you. People will try to drag you down because they're actually uh, projecting their thing of like, I wish I was able to go and do that. Well, I wish I was living the life I wanted to live and I'm not. So I'm going to drag Stephen or I'm going to drag Reggie down with me to mm -hmm. make sure that I feel better because I because that's how we're, we're wired as humans. We're wired to protect ourselves, to protect our status, our level of uh, our identity in, in society, right? So expect mm -hmm. all that. The better thing to do, though, is you got to go and find people or a group of people who are doing what you want to do, or at least are, are in business themselves and get yourself around those people. Even in your local town or city, there are business owners you could go and hang out with. Maybe you don't even want to run that type of business, but they're a business owner and they have been for many years. You'd actually learn a lot from, from those kinds of people because they're used to relying on themselves 
understanding that they got to put money into their own business to make it successful and stuff like that. That's, and that's, that's the thing I didn't know because I like a lot of people, like most people are not entrepreneurs and that's okay. Like you don't have to be an entrepreneur, right. but if you want to be, you got to get around people like that or otherwise everyone's going to doubt you and tell you your idea is terrible or you're a, you're terrible whenever really you could be great and go and do it, you know? Absolutely. I'm going to definitely break the fourth wall for a second and just, just straight up talk to the audience real quick. So um, I wanted to really touch on that. Listen to what he is saying. Th these are the mechanics behind increasing your income that we just don't think about. We can be so caught up into this, to this trap of, I don't want to call it a trap, but just into this way, th this mindset of, I have to save money. I have to get out of debt. Okay, there's more to life than that. You have to increase your income. If you truly want to live life, you want to live. You don't have to have five different streams of income, but if you just had one more stream of income, that could significantly change your life. And then you could add another one and that would drastically change your life. So Stephen, back to that Zig Ziglar quote that you said, it was an amazing quote. And I, I, I think I've heard that before too. Yeah. I want to know, you know, if you, you could just tell the audience what had, like how has your business helped you help other people get what they want sure. that essentially helps you get what you want in life. Yeah. So well, to begin with, when I first started and I was selling, you know, secondhand stuff on eBay, right. Mm -hmm. People would laugh and say, Oh, you're not really helping people get what they want, but you are because I listed something on eBay. People wanted it because they, they bid on it or they mm -hmm. purchased it on a buy now and yep. then they got it. So I helped somebody get what they wanted. I was just the connection between the product and the other person. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing to consider, even at a very minor level, you're helping other people get what they want. It, you could literally be selling, you know, like donuts in a donut shop. Right. And you're still helping people get what they want. People want donuts. Right. But anyway, uh, then on from that, as we grew the Amazon business, it was just the eBay thing expanded more helping more people get what they want buying if they bought a cl clothes covers from me, they bought plastic shoe boxes from me, they bought whatever they were random things they were buying from me. That was that was it in action again. As mm -hmm. time has gone on now, where we created Marketplace Superheroes, where we started teaching people this process. And again, a lot of people I know, people teach things and it's like, why teach it if you're doing it? The reason for that is simple. There's millions of products to sell on Amazon, number one. I couldn't sell them all. Even if I had all the money in the world, I don't have all the time in the world or the team in the world. That'd be very difficult. But also on from that, you know, what we've done on Marketplace Superheroes is, is what we're talking about here. Number one, teach people how to do this so that they can get what they want. In other words, teach them this business that we're very good at so that they can go and do it. They can make money and they can get what they want in their life. On from that, then when we have all these clients in marketplace superheroes, we're constantly looking for what are the problems our clients have? Everybody listen to this bit because this is, you can do this with any business. So mm -hmm. we looked at it and we realized, well, shipping from China, a lot of our clients do that is difficult. It's costly. And if you're doing a small order, if you're just a beginning merchant, like a lot of our sellers when they're starting doing little orders, it's incredibly expensive because a shipping company, a freight forwarder who would ship your stuff, they're not really interested in you because you're not, they're not going to make much money. So they have to charge you a lot of money so that they can make something. So we were like, we have thousands of students now. What if we just put our own containers on the water, like on a ship and we shipped it to the U.S.? We shipped it to UK and Ireland. We shipped it to Australia because we have uh, warehouses in all those different countries. We right. can make it actually way less expensive for our members, which we did. And now this year alone, we shipped like 2 million items, actually. Wow. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. So, um, so that's it in action again. On it goes again. Marketplace superheroes. We're teaching people this process. We're watching people get results. Some other people are finding it difficult. Right. They need coaching. Right. So let's let's create a coaching program like all you're doing in your life is continually identifying problems and creating solutions. And you can look at other businesses, identify a problem they have. And even if you don't know the solution, go and find the solution and create the connection. So even with us, like another example, just to keep it. Examples yeah. are good. Yeah, we go. just, we're just about to launch something called um, hero deals .com. It's not launched yet. But the idea behind the hero deals was, well, like. We have a couple of thousand different products in stock now in our freight business for our members and ourselves too. And some of it are our products too and our partners. Mm -hmm. And we were just like, why don't we do our own website as well where we help our members sell more of their products? So like we've done that now and our members love it. And now it's a whole thing. Like, But if, but like, if I had been five years ago, I was an absolute nobody. I had no following whatsoever. 
Uh, Rob and I are these two weird Irish guys. We're still weird, but we have a little bit of a following now. Um, how I couldn't have done hero deals because I didn't have all of that, the, the stuff I have now. So the point for anybody listening today is like, wherever you are in your life right now, whatever level that is, quote unquote, you just got to figure out who are people you can help now or, and, and figure out those solutions. Like I just said, I want to keep saying it. Even if you don't know how to do it yourself, you can go find a solution. Let's say you find a company in your local uh, town who don't have a website. And you're like, I can't make a website. Okay, go to upwork.com. Find someone who can do the website and then go back to the company and say, hey, uh, I can get that done for you. And you can figure out the pricing from that person. So they'll tell you, okay, it's let's say it's $1,000 to get it done. Cool. Okay. Back to the company. I can do that. It's $2,000. So you just made $1,000 now for creating a connection. And that's uh, really powerful. But that's something I didn't know about. I didn't think that way. I was just like in my head all the time. You know, Reggie? Like you're, you're, like you're thinking about you all the time. Whereas actually when you think about other people, that's mm -hmm. how you start getting what you want. Wow. Wow. This is, this is million dollar advice right here. I mean, it really is. It's, it's, it's teaching you how to think like no other, because that's the thing. Everyone thinks the same way they get the same results. You think differently, you get totally different results. Am I right, Stephen? So I couldn't agree more. Yeah, absolutely. That, that is, that is very powerful. So, um, just expanding a little bit more about your business. Can you speak on the results that you've given like your students and what life change you've seen in them, how they've grown several multiple thousands of dollars on Amazon? Yeah. Well, a few things about that. Yeah. But I think the first thing for anybody listening, like when it comes to selling on Amazon and it's a brilliant business model, it truly is a uh, few things. We've made it really simple for our members. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you how we've done that in a second. Um, Cause in a lot of courses, like you go there, they teach about finding products. You go, uh, you, you find a supplier in the far East, for example, you get pricing and blah, blah, blah. And then you're stuck then. Cause you're like, how do I import this product? How do I do this? How do I do that? We've made a lot of that stuff easy for our members, which I'll get to. And of course, really a point before that again is, if you're coming into something like this and you're saying, I'm going to start an Amazon business so that I can, let's say, get out of student debt or I can do different things. I can, I can make more money now. I'm going to tell you something. It's not the right business. And I know you guys are going, what? I can't believe you're saying this. But yeah. it's not the right business because you want to really be in a situation where you have, a, like you have some money, let's say three to $5,000, right? You have that, that you can invest in the business to start small and grow from there. But if you're in a situation where you're in trouble financially, I wouldn't recommend starting an e-commerce business because it's a, it's a capital intensive business, right? You need money to buy stock. I would suggest go and learn a skill like I talked about. Mm -hmm. And we have a thing called Side Hustle Heroes. It's like a free thing you can go and check out and you can learn about that. That's just a little comment for anybody listening. So then when it comes back to your question, Reggie, uh, mm -hmm. we've helped thousands of people now. We have, we have hundreds and hundreds of documented case studies of people, everything from getting their first sale on Amazon with their own branded product. That's an important point because they don't sell other people's. They sell their own product. They get their own buyer code to put their own brand on it, which is really cool. Uh, we've got people right from their first sale right up to you know, hitting the seven figure level yearly now. Uh, we've got a couple, a couple of people nearly at that level. And so the process is very simple, right? Basically, I'll, I'll give you a framework you can think about when you're selling products on Amazon. Some call it the rule of five, right? Mm -hmm. So let's just say, and I'll, we'll talk about finding products in a second. Let's say you have five Amazon products that you've found over time. You've imported them with your own brand on it and everything. And I'll, I'll make it easy. Don't worry. Uh, you've got five products, right? Now you sell them in five different Amazon sites. So Amazon.com, Amazon UK, Germany, France, Italy, Spain, etc. And there's a simple way to do that. Don't panic, everybody. So you've now got five countries. You're making five sales a day per product per country. And you're making an average net profit of $5. That's five by five by five by five. Over a 30-day period, that's $18,750 net profit before tax with five items, right? Now that's a framework. It's not like a guarantee, obviously, right? But that's just like with a small number of items, making a small number of sales in a number of countries, you can actually grow a pretty successful business. And that's the whole thing we teach at Marketplace Superheroes. It's the process of finding those items because actually 
importing products, it's actually really easy with our company, Superhero Freight. Uh, and, and the reason I say that is because we've custom built that solution for our members. There's no other company really out there who, uh, let's say, Reggie, you find a product, right, on, on Amazon. Mm -hmm. You see the competition's low. You see you can make your own brand. You go to Alibaba, right? You find a, a manufacturer. You make sure they're in business for over three years. They've got uh, reviews or gold star, all that kind of stuff, which I can talk about more if you want. Uh, but that's a simple level, what you're looking to do there. You speak to them, you get the price and blah, blah, blah. It all checks out. It looks great. You're going, what do we do now? That's where we take over. So we come in and we would say, okay, I see all the information is in our online system because we, we built all that. And we literally mm -hmm. talk to the supplier on your behalf and we arrange all the importing. You just basically prepay your shipping like you prepay your cell phone credit, real mm -hmm. simple. And we, do, we ship it for you. And then that's it. Whereas if you don't have all that, and then outside that, we have a team that can do translations and all these different things, which are not actually that expensive because we pass on those savings to our members. If you don't have all that, you have to go and find all that. And it's really difficult. So we've made it really simple by putting everything someone needs into one place to sell mm -hmm. on Amazon. So that's like a bit of a comment on the framework, a bit of a comment on how we've made things simple and a bit of an idea of the process as well. Absolutely. So when it comes down to, to this program in this course and everything that you've helped over 8,000 plus, you know, people with what, what kind of costs are we looking at? And are there like payment plans and how does this work as a whole? Uh, well, in terms of launching your Amazon businesses, we're talking about the kind of cost there. I have a video on YouTube about this, but I think I got the three and a half thousand dollars was my amount of money that would launch an Amazon business at a very small level, like, like one product probably. Um, but, but again, that's fine. Like you bring in a product and you double, you're going to double your money. So if you put, let's say you put $2,000 or 1500 bucks into a product, you're going to get back that. So you're, you're going to double your money to 3000 if it was 1500. Mm -hmm. So like, that's good. I mean, that's much better than any bank's going to give you. And, uh, and you have to, you don't have to do the day-to-day -day work because Amazon will do it for you They do this thing called FBA you can send in your products to their warehouses. We help you with all that, don't worry. And you know they take care of the day-to-day, -day, do the customer support and everything. It's really, really good. Uh, in terms of our course, we have all these different ways of doing it. We have payment plans if you want to pay it over 12 months. Uh, but typically, we're about $1,000 for our program. But you can pay it off like 97 or something a month, I think it is, for 12 months. So you know, in terms of a college education, if you want to put it up against that, it's a lot less expensive because uh, college is a lot more than that. Now, I would say... I will tell you, and I'm, I'm doing this a long time, without having freight forwarder access, like what we have at Marketplace, without having the connections that you need, it can take a long time to get this kind of a business up and running. But just coming back to like the whole thing of we have now is we don't sell courses anymore in our mind, we sell partnerships. So how do we partner mm -hmm. with our students? Well, you know, if, if we're gonna ship your products, well, that's great. And we make some money on the shipment. You save money because it's way less than you would pay a freight forwarder traditionally. You get your business up and running, you get rocking, then you want to ship more. So you're going to ship with us. So like that's the win-win we have with our clients. And obviously as well, I talked about hero deals, which we're looking to build, or we'll actually sell our clients and our own products on there as well. So that's really our goal, Reggie, is just to build a, an army of people who can partner with us and sell their products on Amazon for the, for the long term. Absolutely. So when I think about your, your program, first of all, I just want to tell you guys, the link to Steven's program is going to be in the description. You guys can get access to it. Click on it. If you want to learn more about it, you can look on his page as well. I'm going to have his link uh, to his YouTube channel as well. So you can look at the case studies, look at how much other people have made and see other people's success in their lives. And you can get these same results. So people think of these things as myths. And I like what you said, Stephen, about how compared to a college education, with thousand dollars okay and so so what you know courses are going to increase your knowledge and your skills which is going to make you more valuable to the marketplace which means you can now add more value to more people and get them what they want so yeah. you can get what you want in your life i cannot stress that enough so steven thank you so much for just touching on that because you know it, it, yeah it takes a while to build a profitable business sure let's say it takes five years how long does college take four, five, six years, depending on you, right? It depends on what you put into it. Am I right, Stephen? Oh, yeah, look, absolutely. We've seen, and we have lots of different students, you know, there's some people start a lot slower than others because they're in a different situation. We've had mm -hmm. people though, uh, Peter and Rich, these two guys from Boston actually, 
these guys are amazing. You know, within two years, they've almost got themselves to being a seven figure yearly company. And uh, for anybody, and again, one of the big questions people have is like, how much profit do you make on Amazon? I'll just tell you now, whatever you're selling a product for, uh, 30% of that's going to be your profit in your pocket, right? And some of you might've said, but you said you're going to double your money. Well, yeah, you will. Because let's say you're selling something for $20. Well, 30% of 20 is $6, right? So that's your profit. Now, in order to get your $6, you probably invested three and you've now got six. So you've doubled your money. So that's basically how it works. So you can look at any Amazon product and you can get a rough feeling of the profitability by looking at that. So if it was $100, it's making about 30 bucks, right? And that's kind of cool because then you can, you can really break down how long it would take you to get to your desired uh, income level. So if you wanted to make $5,000 a month, and again, that like if you wanted to make five grand in your pocket, you probably need to make more like $8,000 net profit, just so everyone's listening, because you'll have different costs and bits and bobs, you know, outside of whatever, right? So let's just say you wanted to pay yourself five grand, uh, and, and let's just keep it easy. Imagine it was five grand net profit then, right? So divide that down by 30, and that's going to give you your daily net profit that you need, which I think is $166, I believe it is. Mm-hmm. Um, that's your net profit. And then you think, well, what if I'm making $5? Per sale. So you take your, I'm going to actually do it here now just to make sure I get the maths right because it's laid here in Ireland. So 166 uh, profit daily, divide that by uh, five and we get to uh, 33 sales you'd basically need to make, uh, which is, you know, it's it's not bad at all. I'm just going to make, yep, my maths is correct. So 33 sales you need to make a day. And then let's just say, for example, you were selling five products, you know, 33 divided by five is like six and a bit products, six and a bit sales a day. So like that's in, that's globally. You know, so when you divide it down, like you might say, well, that's three in, in North America uh, per product. It's three in Europe per product. And all of a sudden it's like, wow, three sales a day in an item. It's not very much, you know, you don't have to be selling really competitive items to do that. And that's the thing I want to stress to everybody about an, a, a business like this is that like the income level you want to get to, it's really just how many products you're going to sell and what's your profitability and how many you sell a day. And it really isn't as difficult as you might think, but yeah, it does take a bit of time to find the items and get them imported and stuff like that. But it's very simple, you know? Absolutely. And uh, I want you guys to think about this. This is a thought that I definitely want to leave you with. If you, if you learn anything from this video, no matter what side hustle, what business, whatever way you decide to increase your income on, if you buy a course on whatever field that is going to expand your knowledge, if you buy a book, that is going to expand your knowledge because you're learning about the exact subject matter that you're wanting to profit off of. And to me, that only makes sense. If we put it up against college, you pay several thousands of dollars a year. Uh, at the end of it, you're only guaranteed one thing and that's debt. And that's obviously if, you, if you're not one of those star students who got scholarships and grants, right? So if you're not one of those star students and you're like most of everybody, like 90% of college students, then you have to pay it back. And guess what? It doesn't guarantee the job that you've been working oh so hard for. But this right here, buying a course, you yourself are interested in this. You're going to be motivated to put the work in to get the results. And that is going to lead to more income into your life. And I just I want to stress that so much. And Stephen, if you had anything to add on to that, please, please. Yeah, I do. I do, actually, because. Like online courses uh, are a funny thing. They've, 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 I think they're fantastic. I have learned so many wonderful things from online courses and I continue to buy them because I learned so much because it's people who've already figured out something. I'm able to go and buy that at a, at a very small amount of money, you know, in, in, really in the real world and go and learn that skill. But the problem I think a lot of people have, and it's in my community too, is that, you know, unfortunately, a lot of people don't do anything with a course. They buy it. And they don't implement it and they don't, they don't stay with it. And then they say the course doesn't work or it's a scam or whatever. Right. But typically it's just down to the fact that that person went in um, looking for what we call an event of wealth. Right. So for example, I win the lottery and I won hundred million dollars and that happened overnight. And then that story gets told on the news. Oh, $100 million. I'm so wealthy now. Uh, and that's what people kind of want. Like, so it's also the problem with the media too. It's like what we talked about earlier with the Shark Tank example is that they're going to feature the story of the guy who, our girl who had, you know, no business knowledge before they started this thing in their garage or garage. And in, you know, 
three years, they sold it for $200 million or whatever. And that's the story we get told because it's like, we all want to hear that story. And wow, oh my God, we've got to watch this thing on the news now and stay watching the news where they sell advertising. But anyway, uh, it's not conspiracy theory or anything. It's just a reality, right? So, yeah. so we take that same mentality into buying a course then, which is, well, I want the event of wealth. So when I buy this course, I'm going to get the money quickly. And mm -hmm. sometimes it can come quickly. I mean, we've got programs where we teach skills. Like we said, you know, we teach people how to book people on podcasts, real simple stuff like that. And people make money in a week, like, but with an Amazon business, you, you won't. And the reason for that is it takes time to find your product. You've got to get it produced, actually get it manufactured. You got to import the thing. Mm -hmm. That takes a little bit of time, about a month to import, but a month to produce it. You know, a month to find it, let's just say. So there's three months, right? And people, that's too long for some people. But it's like, yeah, but if you've been working in a job for years, not getting what you want, well, a couple months to launch a business isn't a big deal. And so we have to totally change our mentality around life, around uh, success in business as well, and understand that things take time. And you always start small. You always start ugly, but you build from there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Stephen, this is going to go slightly off topic, but do you have an Instagram for marketplace superheroes and do you have a personal Instagram? Yeah, I have one for me. Just it's uh, at Stephen J Summers. And uh, yeah, I, I use it a bit. Um, we have someone post up for me as well on there. I'm going to actually start doing more stories and stuff like that. But yeah, Stephen J Summers, anyone can contact me, uh, send me a message and I'll send you back a, a voicemail or something like that. No problem whatsoever. Awesome. So do you mind if I get a picture real quick of this meeting for Instagram and I tag you in it? Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll make sure I get you the little handle. That'd be great. I'm a millennial, so. <laughs> <we do. laughs> cool. So I really don't have anything else. Did you have anything that you wanted to add before we wrap this video up? No. Awesome. awesome. Well, you know, thank you so much for adding this value. This is seriously like, if, if I had to put a price to this video, we could honestly sell this video. Of course it's gonna be free, but I'm just saying giving, getting advice from a CEO, like monetary advice from a CEO is something you don't get every day. So guys really pay attention to what is being said in this video. A lot of it, as you see, is not necessarily specific to a certain price amount. It's really on the process of thinking. So understand that, and we're gonna wrap the video up now. So Steven, do you wanna join me in my last famous two words? Sure. Awesome, so on the count of three, we're gonna say stay cold. One, two, three, stay cold. Stay cold. <laughs> Thank you, Steven, I appreciate you so much. Thanks, man, it was a real pleasure, thank you.